Hey guys, today we're going to talk about trusses and some keywords that we're going to use when we describe trusses. Today's focus is really mostly on vocabulary and concepts, uh, but we do have a little bit of math that we need to do today. Uh, be on the lookout for a future video where we start to talk about calculating forces and trusses, but today let's just focus with the basics. Alright, so these notes are in Schoology, so if you need more information or if you have questions, make sure you take a look at these uh, in Schoology. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions as well. Okay, so a truss is a support framework or uh, a set of posts, bars, whatever you want to call them, uh, structural members that work together to support anything. Uh, specifically in this class, we're going to describe roofs, bridges, or other structures. So a simple truss is confined, uh, uh, composed of triangles, which will retain their shape even when removed from supports. So this is a bad example of a truss. This rectangular shape has four beams with these little circles connecting them, kind of like rivets. If we were to apply a force on the side of that, it would fall. Triangles, on the other hand, make things so much stronger, because then when we try to apply a force on the side, there's something that's there to resist that force. So we're going to use these words as we talk about trusses, and we'll, we'll kind of describe them as we go. But pin supports, roller supports, Structural members, joints, tension, compression, moments, aka torques, forces, and static determinants. Alright, so the first thing that we need to talk about are supports. When we talk about trusses, we have two kinds of supports. We have a pinned support and a roller support. So a pinned support prevents motion in any direction. It can support a structure in the up-down as well as the side to side. And there's two different ways that we can orient them. You can see here on this left picture that the, the pin support is located vertically. And in this right picture, it's oriented horizontally. So it could be like sitting on the edge, basically. But either way, it doesn't allow any left to right movement, and it doesn't allow any up or down movement. Now, a roller support does allow motion in one direction and prevents it in one direction. So a roller support, if you can imagine pushing on the sides of this rock, or wheel if you will, it would roll, right? So it does not provide any support in that direction. But if you were to push directly down on that rock, then it would provide vertical support. Just like before, we can orient it either horizontally, where it's providing vertical support, or we can position it uh, like so, where it's providing horizontal support. So, when we say members, we mean each of the individual beams that make up a truss. And the dots where the members meet are called joints. So, in this image here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 members. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 joints. Again, the line parts are the members, and the dots are the joints. When we talk about forces on trusses, there are two types of forces that we can experience. Compression, which we use the color red, or sometimes orange, to, uh, to symbolize, and it's an inward force, like being compressed. And tension, which we use the color blue to represent, in which the forces are pulling away from our members. All right, so what we're beginning today is going to be a pretty long process, but this is the first step for evaluating a truss. The first thing that we do is we calculate something called static determinants. Once we've identified whether it is statically determinant or not, then we can move into the more complicated and what will probably take us one week to get through one problem for, which is evaluating member forces and moments. So here is a sample truss. Before we do anything, let's take a look at what we have. We have uh, th uh, four different joints in this diagram. We have joint A, joint B, joint C, and joint D. And in this diagram, we're told that the distance from A to C is 24 feet, the distance from B to C is 12 feet, and the distance from C to D is 8 feet. Now notice they don't give us the distance for AB or the distance for BD, but we can always use trig to measure those later. 
We also have two supports that are in this diagram. At joint A, you can see that we have a pinned support. And I know that it's a pin because it's got this triangle shape. The support at D is actually a roller. And it, although it looks like a pin support, it actually has wheels on it. So uh, it is a roller. We also have a downward force that's being applied at joint C, which is 600 pounds. Oh, and another force at B, which is horizontal to the right, 500 pounds. We're calling this force FB. We're calling the force at C, FC. So uh, when we name members, we just name them as the member in between the joints. So this is going to be member AB because it's between joint A and joint B. And that means that from A to C, this would be joint AC. From B to C, that would be joint BC. This would be CD. And this would be BD. All right. This is kind of important, so let's make sure that we discuss this. We make a couple of assumptions when we do math this way. First, we assume that all of our members are perfectly straight. All of our loads are applied at the joints, not on the members. All of the joints are pinned and frictionless, and that means that they would freely rotate if there were no other forces. Uh, each member has no weight, which is a big assumption. And members can only experience tension or compression forces, which means there's no twisting that's happening, uh, torsional forces, which would be happening in the Z direction. We're just going to ignore that crazy complicated stuff. Okay, so this is the static determinancy equation. This is what we use to identify whether a structure works before we invest and do the rest of the work. And it's a pretty simple equation. 2J equals M plus R. In this equation, J is the number of joints, M is the number of members, and R is the number of reactions. So basically, the sum of our members and reactions has to be equal to two times the number of joints. And if it doesn't, then this structure won't work. So here is an example. We have uh, two pinned connections in this diagram. We have one at joint A and one at joint C. We have uh, four joints. We have one, two, three, four, five members. So one thing that we haven't talked about is how many reactions we get from something. That's what the R is in this equation. So to determine the number of reactions, we just look at the types of supports. So a pinned support provides two reaction forces because it can react horizontally and vertically. So in this example, we have two pinned, uh, two pinned supports, so we would actually have four reactions. So R equals four. Our members, we have one, two, three, four, five of them. So that would be five. So five plus four equals nine. So nine on the right side. On the left side, we've got two J, and the number of joints is four. So two times four is eight which means that for this problem, 8 would equal 9, and that's not how numbers work, so this does not work. However, we can change this by changing the joint, uh, the, the support at joint C to a roller. We could also change the one at joint A and keep C as a pin support, but we need one of them to be a pin and the other to be a roller. In that case, now we have the same number of joints and we have the same number of members, but we have one less reaction, so now 8 equals 8. All right, so the reason that this works is that structures actually have to be able to flex. And if you have too much support, then it can actually prevent the structure from doing what it's supposed to do, which is reacting to forces. So that's why we actually need a degree of freedom on joint C. If we applied that force, then this would actually move a little bit, and, and that's by design. So if we put too much support, it would actually put too much strain on the structure, and it wouldn't work. So here's another example. This is a real-world bridge. It's in Brockport, New York. It has 19 joints, 35 members, and three reaction forces. One pin, one roller. So on the left side of our equation, 2 times j, well, j is 19. So 2 times 19 is 38. In this example, we have 35 members and three reactions. So 35 plus 3 is 38. So in this case, our structure is statically determinate. And that's pretty much all you need to know. 
We're going to go over this in class too, maybe do a couple other example problems. Otherwise, I want you to go ahead and jump in and start working on the static determinants practice assignment for today. Good luck. Let me know if you need anything. See you next time.